just because I'm old. <laughs> okay, they switched out cables for us. We're back live. We're still on injury time. He's used uh, almost a full minute. 32 seconds. Wrestlers get two injury times. On the second injury time, his opponent will get will get choice of position. Third injury time, and he injury defaults. We got a minute eight left. It's still three to three. Westfield locks up the cradle, breaks the cradle, has that cradle locked up. And there it is. One, there's the count. Two, three. Okay, he must have got five. Stop counting. There it is. Yep, three points. Boy, up at six to three now. Sits that leg in, and we got 38 seconds left to go. Although we haven't had a lot of action, looks like he gets one. There it is. So now it's six to four. <laughs> Evidently, you know, the illness, everything's timing here, Mike. Everything's timing. He shoots in, and he's got a long reach, that boy does. Okay, Green is backing out, but backing out, will he get hit? No, not yet. I'm sure the referee's talking, but we only have 17 seconds to go. Not much time to make up a difference in a stalling call here. He ain't got time to stand. He needs to chase him out of bounds. 10 seconds. There's the stalling. Backing up, backing up. He's gonna have to score four seconds. Oh, he last ditch attempt on a headlock and lost it. Got a bit of an upset here. A number one uh, semi state champion he gets defeated by a number four place that champion. And Evan, uh, Evan Elder advances tomorrow with a record of 34 and nine. We'll see him tomorrow. Here. Okay, our next match is 132. Griffith Sherman, 38 and 4, senior from Bloomington South High School. His opponent is Kyle Egolf. 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 Is that how you pronounce that? I think that's right. Egolf. We'll go with that. It's probably wrong, but we'll go with that. 27 and 3 from Columbia City, a senior. Griffith, a senior from Bloomington South. He was fifth last year at 120 pound weight class. So he's been here before. And taking a prize home and looking to uh, move up the ladder. Nice, nice single leg, but nice counter. Switches off to zone single leg, now to a double. Comes in. He's got the uh, cradle locked up, gets the two takedown. Works to the head. There's the back count, and all just one. Must get at least two to earn any points. 
That'll give him two points, a count of two. He must get to five, count of five to get to three points. Flip of the coin, red to first. Green's choosing down. Red will have choice in the third period if we make it there. Mike Runyon is your head coach from Bloomington South. Blaine Culp is your head coach from Columbia City. Listen to the, I'm listening to the referees in the stands. <laughs> Doing an excellent job up there, by the way. Okay, we come up with a stalemate. Actually, that is a coach from the stands. <laughs> yes, it is. There he gets his escape, excellent move. Bloomington South is one of those schools that has a rich tradition in wrestling. Many state champions there. So many they had to have a club, called it the, the Legends. Yes. Way back before even you were born, Mike. Oh, nice takedown, nice takedown and escape. So we're now we're up to uh, four to two, four to two. <laughs> Nothing, he's got, there he's got both legs now. They're gonna give him a takedown, there it is. He had one leg and both his legs were in, feet were inbounds. But he needed the second leg to get that takedown, which he got. A little adjustment on our cameraman. He's getting a little closer, doing a great job over here. Did I mention Mike McCarty? What an awesome guy. Okay. Tear a tendon in your elbow or something. Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we stop. We're going to go into third period, and we got blood time for Green. <coughs> Sorry, what? Dave Grossman's out there working on him. Dave is a, a trainer. He's been a trainer for USA Wrestling for, oh, my gosh, a million years, I think, maybe. I don't exaggerate either, Mike. But he's been on many, many, many national or an international championships for the USA Wrestling and uh, he he's out of Bloomington. He came back to Bloomington and uh, just an awesome trainer. Just tremendous supporter for wrestling as well. Okay, we go into the third period. It's six to two, six to two for Griffith. Griffin, Griffin. Okay, he lets him up. Now we got a six to three. Oh, that was nice. Good defense as well. All night, he just he takes under there and unable to finish. <coughs> oh man, lats on that good, but they're out of bounds before he could complete that. Third period, a minute 26 left. What we got here? Lost his uh, nose plug. <clears throat> Get 
Get up and demand information from state championship events by following the IHSA on Twitter at IHSA1. That's IHSA1. Well, he's in stop wrestling. Nice drag. Still cannot complete it. Less than a minute now in this match. It's going to have to score twice to, uh, to go ahead. A single takedown is not going to win it for him. Griffin there. You look like he's blocking, look like he's stalling, and then he shoots in and hooks that single leg. He's got it. Kyle comes up over top. But I don't believe he's got 16 seconds. Nice roll, but he, and there's the takedown. But still, 10 seconds to go. It's five to six. Five to six. Can't get his arm out. Five seconds to go. Griffin has that leg. Not going to let go, and that'll end the period. And, uh, what a tight match. Six to five. Your winner, Griffith Shermer from Bloomington South, advances to tomorrow morning. Griffith Shermer from Bloomington South wins a tight one on that three. Six to five. He advances at 132. Fernando, you're red. Nick, you're green. Now up back. Okay, our next match, Nick Lee, 31 and zero, undefeated from Evansville, modern day. He is a sophomore here at the 132 pound weight class. Nice, hasn't got that takedown yet. Fernando has that wizard in, so they're gonna probably, yep, go out of bounds. I'm telling you, Nick, Nick is returning last year. He placed third at 126. He also has wrestled on the Fila Cadet, USA Wrestling Fila Cadet national team and wrestled in Columbia. Now we got, he got his takedown. Put him on his back. Got that one leg in. Here comes the second leg. There it is. Outstanding. Nick Lee moves on to tomorrow morning. Now we move to 138. We got Clayton Moore from Manchester. He's a senior with a record of 35 and one. His opponent is Cap Casper McIntosh, record of 29 and nine from Portage. He is a freshman. Senior versus a freshman here. Clayton Moore, 35 and 1 from Manchester. Casper McIntosh, excuse me, from Portage, a freshman, 29 and 9. Clayton shoots in, has that single leg. Switches off to a double now. Still unable to finish. He's out of bounds, but his opponent's still in bounds. Now he drags him out.
Jack and the other kid you're talking about? That's the one. I told you he's got a lot of funk. Je <laughs> Jeremiah. Whoa. McGart is your head coach at Manchester. Leroy Vega is your head coach at Portage. Still no takedown here. Nope, there it is. Portage gets the takedown. Yep. He's got that front half, but he is not in control. So there was no scoring there for him. So Casper comes out of the first period leading two to nothing. Flip of the coin goes to Green. Green defers to the third period. Casper chooses down. Nice roll through. Getting this back count. So he gets two, two back count, and then we have an escape. Gets it five to two for the freshman. Not quite halfway through these weight classes this Friday night at the Indiana State Wrestling. Whoa, no, it would be the Indiana High School <laughs> Lake Association State Championship. You got to get my Indianas right. <laughs> 52 seconds left in this second period. With Casper from Portage leading five to two, his opponent Clayton Moore from Manchester. Good control, good riding, continue to work. Got 12 seconds to go. He needs to continue to work and get off those hips. One second. There it is. Okay, we're going to the third period. It's five to two. Casper McIntosh, Portage freshman in the lead. His opponent, Clayton Moore, a senior from Manchester. His choice. He chose top. Interesting choice. Leroy Vega is his coach of Portage is very animated over in the corner. Green's, Green's ahead, or uh, excuse me, in control, but surprisingly high there. Dave Fleming, the man in charge. Walking by. We might get him on camera here yet. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> I'm not very photogenic. But Mike is a great cameraman. Mike is a great cameraman. With his foot even. He's up for an Academy Award. Cinematography. Did I say that right? All right. 
<laughs> well, I'll tell you what, one minute left to go, and uh, there's two takedown. Oh, reversal. Excuse me, reversal. That makes that score 7 to 2. 7 to 2. Thirty seconds to go. Nice job of taking him down, controlling him all the way down. When the when the offensive wrestler has a defensive man in the air, it's his responsibility to bring him safely back down to the mat. Otherwise, it's a slam. Or to point to the other wrestler. Okay, coach tells him let him go, and he responds. Three seconds to go. That's pretty much it, and it is. Okay, Casper McIntosh from Portage is your winner here tonight. Advances till tomorrow with a record of 30-9 and nine as a freshman here at the state championships. Another big match here. We got uh, Joe Lee from Evansville Modern Day. He is a freshman. He has a brother that wrestles and is here as well. But Joe is a freshman with a record of 31 and one. His opponent is Connor Moore. He's a junior from Southmont, 36 and eight. John Lee of Evansville Modern Day and Connor Moore of Southmont. Nope, nope, it doesn't get the takedown because his foot was out of bounds. He has to have both his feet inbounds to get that takedown. Modern day's head coach, Greg Schaefer's in the corner. There's his takedown. Nice job. Southmont head coach is Kevin Wilkerson. Gets him up, gets the escape, then gets back in control and gets the takedown. One point escape, goes for, goes for the double and drives him out of bounds. Back down again, now he gets back points. Two takedown and two near fall. Still in control, goes behind him. Gets that wing in and a half. Drives to it, you, yeah, it's tighter than the drum there, buddy. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that was tighter than the drum there? I got confirmation from Mikey. Thank you, Mike. Joe Lee, 32 and one from Evansville Modern Day, a freshman, steps up to tomorrow. What match number? Okay, still at 138, Isaac Eicher, 39 and one, Leo, from Leo, he's a junior. His opponent, Riley Akers from Crown Point, he's a senior, record of 34 and three. Crown points out of uh, Maryville Sim Estate. Leo is out of Fort Wayne Sim Estate. Crown points head coach Scott Vick. And Leo's head coach Josh Domer.
Okay, less than a minute, 48 seconds actually. Okay, he's got it hooked in there. Nice. He's got to drive it over, and he does. There's the takedown and the near fall count. There it is. Izzy Anker, 40 and 1 from Leo, a junior. He moves on to Damar. Then we're going to move off to 145 pounds. Right. Caleb McCormick from your town. He's a junior. 48 and 1. His opponent is Austin Bain from Richmond. 38 and 4, and he is a sophomore. Kale is uh, returning. He was sixth last at 126 last year and fourth, 106, the year before. Richmond's head coach is Jeremy Bain. And Yorktown's head coach, Trent McCormick. Trent uh, is... Kale's father goes underneath, coming out the back. Has that foot hooked up. Now he's grabbed the second one. Looks like it might turn into a stalemate, but no, Kale turns. Still no control. Now Austin is coming out the back. There's the stalemate. It appears that uh, maybe both of these young men have their fathers in the corner. Nice, nice throw by here. Gets his take down. Start works, working a spiral ride. Makes it to his feet. Kale just turns him loose there. Takes him to the edge. He's out of bounds. And keeps him right there. Got a score to two to one here. 28 seconds left in the first period. Okay, 10 seconds left. Yep, somebody lost their mouthpiece. Yeah, I'll put you to sleep. Green has a choice. <laughs> and he defers and we go to red. Red's gonna take down for the start of the second period. We got two to one. Carol McCormick in the lead. Referee now is talking to the uh, Bain, the re uh, Richmond wrestler, about his alignment. Gave him a caution. Again, each wrestler will get two cautions in, in misalignment in the starting position. And the third one will be a point. We got the problem here. Referee stops it. He's looking for blood. He's found blood. Blood on red. Looks like blood's reading. I, I don't know if he's got a cut on his shoulder or what's going on. Each mat here at the Indiana High School State Wrestling Championships has two trainers at each one of the mats. I just noticed that. Each mat has their own set of trainers. The IHSAA has done a good job there to ensure that all the safety of all the uh, wrestlers. You can call 800 farmers or visit farmers.com to find a local 
Each wrestler has five minutes of, of bleeding time. Once the blood is stopped, then they uh, then the cleanup time. Whoa! <laughs> Wrong cup. You didn't warn me. Okay, we get all that control. We're back down. Minute 47 left in this second period. Kale's doing a good job of riding him. There goes the half. Unsuccessful with that. Pulling that arm underneath. And working a ball and chain. Now he's trying to get that out, and I think he's trying to get that across the back. Still unsuccessful for that. Good defense on Bain's part. Forty-eight seconds to go. Now he gets stalling. He's going to stop when the top man is considered to be stalling. The action is stopped. The wrestler is warned. Now, when it's the other way around, when the defensive wrestler is stalling, wrestling continues. So the first first stalling call is a warning, no points. The second one is a point, depending on the infractions. If a two-point stalling call is made, then uh, then the wrestler on the bottom will get his choice. On his feet, lets him go for an escape. Brand brings it two to two. Very tight match here. Got a single leg. We got nine seconds to go. Can he get around? Richmond wrestler's just hanging onto that leg. Time runs out. Bottom wrestler was looking for a takedown there. Didn't get it, looked at the referee, didn't say anything, but looked at him and said, hey, I got this leg, isn't that a takedown? And our referee says, no, no control. on his feet very quickly. He's going to get this escape right here, maybe. Nope. Got out of bounds. Only 15 seconds went off that clock. He's already been up twice. That's interesting. <laughs> There he gets his escape. Based on the way he was wrestling, it was almost inevitable. Kale has a long, lanky frame. He already has a stalling call on him, so the next stall, if he, if he chooses to go that route, is gonna cost him a point, and that would tie it up. So he's got to be stay offensive and stay active. He's got that locked up there, that front head lock. He needs to be able to do something with it. Still no control there, back up on their feet. Stalemate, bringing them back into the center, gonna start them on their feet, start them all over. 44 seconds to go. Again, Kale can't uh, afford a stalling call. He's gonna have to stay active and stay in there. He's got a one point lead.
Lock up that front headlock, and he can use a lot of time there. Less than 30 seconds. Very tight match here. Yes, he does. Still has it. Locking it up in there real tight. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. 12 seconds to go. Takedown comes to five seconds to go. Time's up. Oh, that's an upset, there is no doubt. Austin Bain from Richmond, a junior, advances now till tomorrow's turn and in the top eight in his weight class. Yes, it is. Okay, 145 pound weight class. Tronte Malone from South Bend Adams. He's a sophomore, 35 and three. Blake Jordan, Evansville Modern Day. He's a junior with a record of 24 and three. You just never know. Upsets happen all the time here on Friday night. Nice scramble, nice headlock, came up, good defense. Has a headlock, but didn't get it. Oh, puts him on his back. Gets the takedown. He's getting back points. Looking for the fall. Looking for the fall. He has that tight, but he doesn't have that shoulder down. But he's got a minute 10. He's got a lot of time to squeeze that. A lot of time to be down there. There it is. Boy, that was close. Okay, he calls it potentially dangerous because, because the elbow slid out. It's not illegal because the defensive man is the one that caused the, the illegal move. So it's called potentially dangerous and brought up. No points scored for the bottom man. He gets no reward for making a hold that was legal, illegal. So we got five to nothing. South. South Bend Adams, Brian Woodworth is your head coach. Okay, he gets an escape. Evansville Modern Day's head coach, Greg Schaefer, is in the corner. Good officiating going on here. Both coaches had to be explained to what, what happened. They didn't see. and they, they understood the rules. Ten seconds to go here. First period, nice double, nice double. And he finishes it, there's a takedown. And the time ends for the first period. We got a seven to one lead. South Bend Adams' is Travone Malone is ahead, seven to one. Blake Jordan from Evansville Modern Day. He gets up, he chooses the bottom, and he gets up. There's the headlock and reverse, but no, no, no. We got no head back exposure right now. Still in control. Green still has control. Referee calls him out. Greg Schaefer, head coach from Modern Day, comes over to confer with the uh, official on what exactly happened here. He's looking for a, some back points there. He thought the referee uh, 
moved his hand twice, and he may have, but they're not without the ref or the bottom man coming back up out of pinning combination. So he basically said he counted twice. Well, that should have been an escape. Did he give an escape? He's going to give the reversal. Now the coach is going to come over, and uh, it looks like both of them are going to come over. We're going to have a major conference here. Okay. Right now, it's not. Coach is asking him about the, the motion, why he didn't get the escape. The referee said basically it was the same motion, so it's all a reversal. Modern Day wanted to know about the takedown, thought the ref, referee or the young man's foot was out of bounds, so he's confirmed with his assistant. And his assistant, I believe, well, that's hard to tell what they're saying, but we'll find out. Everything, everything stands. Everything stands, no change. Nine to one right now. Second period, minute 30. I gotta be careful with those returns to make sure they, he is uh, in, in control. We got an illegal one. Said it was a full Nelson. His assistant saw it reported to the referee and the referee concurred that that was exactly what happened. The referee is the only one that can make calls. The assistant can help point out issues but certainly can't make a call. All that decision is in with the main referee. Okay, there's our escape point. Now it's 9-3. to three. Two escapes and a penalty point giving three points. 58 seconds left in this second period. All four coaches are out of their chair, standing in their corner. It's certainly exciting. Nice down for a single leg, lifts him up, looking for a trip, and he gets it, takes him to his back, get him back count. He gets two takedown, and it looks like a two near fall. He's holding the two, but not giving it yet. Waiting to see what will happen. There it is, two near fall. So now it's nine to seven. Ending this, this second period, 10 seconds to go. Modern day still in control. Four seconds. And there's our end of our second period. Now we go into the third period and we have a score of nine to seven. Nine to seven. Malone from South Bend Adams is ahead. Was way ahead there for a minute and, and Blake Jordan is uh, caught up, making this a match. Two-point match. Uh-oh, he gets them hands locked on the head. Very, sometimes that can, that can produce a defensive pin. Works that half in the wrist. Now he loses the wrist. He's got a leg in. Modern day is very persistent on the bottom. They work and they work and they work until all of a sudden at the last few seconds, there we go, we can turn around and he gets an escape. Now it's nine to eight. A takedown will will either seal this or change change the the leader and change our winner. Nice double, nice double coming in. He's got a good lock there. Nice! Oh my goodness! Nice throw. Gets his two-point takedown. Unfortunately, he's out of bounds, so he's getting no back points. 
Wow, that was awesome. Nice double leg, come up to a body lock and then takes him right down. Now we got injury time for modern day. 37 seconds left in the match. Nice. Got a minute and a half of injury time. That was an awesome toss. Would you not say that? That was an awesome toss. All right, I have confirmation from Mike. Okay, he's used over a minute of injury time now. Excuse me, used over 30 seconds of injury time. He's got 50 seconds left. Okay, stopping injury time. 45 seconds left of, of his minute and a half. Caution on green, false start. Tries to hook that elbow, unable to do so. Gotta watch that fall, watch that defensive fall. That's what the referee's looking for. Jesus, he's choking. He's got, he's got his head. Now he turns around. Doesn't get the reversal yet. But he gets him on his back. That means there's two points. And two more points would be 12. If he got back points, he's going to get 12. That's two reversal, two near fall, into the period. It all ends. One point. Outstanding action here. Blake Jordan in the last seconds comes from behind to score a take, a reversal, and near fall points to move on till tomorrow morning. All right. Excitement is everywhere. Even on mat number three. Okay, we're still at 145 pound weight class. Stephen Lawrence from Porty, he's a junior with a record of 35 and three. His opponent from Castle High School, Patrick Schnell. He's a senior with a record of 39 and seven. Stephen comes out of the Maryville Sim Estate. And Patrick comes from Castle. He comes from the Evansville Sim Estate. Boy, if you watch that last match, I'm telling you everything just comes at the last second around here. Seen several Portage kids. Huh? Nice little gator roll, but it comes back. They come back up to their feet. It's a good freestyle move, but it can be used in folk style as well. It's what we're wrestling, and uh, just basically get those. Uh, if you get rolled in it, you can get uh, all discombobulated. Anyway, how do you like that, Mike? Discombobulated. That's exactly right. Or you can be caught on your back and, and uh, rack up the points. Castle's head coach is Bob Harmon. We've got a takedown from Portage wrestler. His head coach is Leroy Vega. It, it, just because we've seen Leroy at this mat, it looks like we seem to have the Portage mat, doesn't it? His, uh, his assistant is Eric Keith.
still in control. Red still in control. And there's our end of our first period. Score two to nothing. Stephen Lawrence from Portage. Portage chooses down. Start this second period. Nice little trip to put him back down on the mat. Tucks, tries to tuck that head. Couldn't pull it in. Gets that arm behind the back. He gets it loose. Looks like somebody caught a something in the mouth there. Injury time for Green. May have bit his tongue. Blood time green. Josh. You want us to go ahead and keep that injury time on there though, do you not? No, if it was blood time. You want us to take injury time off completely? Yes. Question came from the table about whether or not there was injury time or blood time. Referee confirmed that it was all blood time, no injury time. Makes a difference if he calls the second injury time. Very important. Upon the second injury time, his opponent would get choice of position. Could make a big difference in the match. Gets up and gets away. Okay, now it's three to zero. Nice scramble there. Has that leg trying to step across. That's, that's a two because his hands were down on the mat. Leroy's gonna come over. Nope, he decided not to come over. They're confirmed with uh, his assistant. No takedown. What has to happen is that you have to have weight on that front hand. Beyond reaction time. The assistant uh, conferred with his the referee that that didn't happen. So we're still on our feet. 53 seconds left to go in the second period. Nice takedown. And they go tumbling out of bounds. Five to zero now. Again, lots of excitement. That's right. Except Saturday night. <laughs> Friday night is very exciting. You either win and go on or you lose and go home. A lot on the line here tonight. Yep. Styles clash. Exactly right. Okay, Green is taking down. Five to zero, third period. Oh yeah, red jump. Referee always says set, and then he blow, pauses and blows the whistle. And just trying to get a little ahead of the whistle, we get a little, we we do a little jumping there, and referee catches him and gives him a caution. Again, each wrestler gets two cautions, false starting or incorrect alignment without any penalty. Oh, he gets caught. Gets a two-point reversal. Five to two now. Oh, 
third period here, minute, a little over a minute to go. Top man here, Patrick Schnell from Castle. He's got, he's gonna have to do a lot to overcome three points. Now four points. But we saw that happen, haven't we, Mike? We were behind, oh, that's, oh my goodness, that was nice. Nice little throw by, brings out another takedown. Eight to two now, 30 seconds to go. That takedown may have been the one that sealed this victory for him. Oh my goodness, yeah, that did it. Nice, nice job. Stephen Lawrence from Portage, a junior, 36 and three, advances till tomorrow morning. Now we're halfway through this event tonight. We moved to 152 pound weight class. What number is this? 61. 61? 61. We dropped way down. Okay. Okay, Drew Birkenbau from Yorktown, a freshman, th record of 36 and 5. His opponent is Isaiah Michaels, 40 and 4 from center field. He is a junior. Pulls down a takedown here. Puts in the half and runs that spiral. Now he goes a wrist and a half. Driving him over. There's two. Gets two near fall. Looks like he's going to get a reversal on him. No. Man, that was awesome. Yorktown coaches are uh, really out of their box there. Very exciting coaches, though. That's that's yeah. Troy. That's Troy and his son, I believe. Yes, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. They're both assistants to Trent McCormick, who is the head coach at Yorktown. Very intense young man. Mike Day is your head coach from Centerville. Okay, 17 seconds to go. Calls him for a stalemate. Brings it back to finish up. Yorktown brought eight wrestlers, the largest number of wrestlers from a single school here tonight. J.D. Mitch has now joined this team. He's sitting there just a smiling. He's happy things are rolling. <laughs> Wrestles are good. Red chooses neutral. He's down four to, he's down Four zero. Isaac Michaels from Centerville and Drew Berkebau from Yorktown. That'll get you in anywhere. Oh, nice, nice takedown. And now a reversal. Wow, that was pretty awesome. Six to two, has a wrist and a half, driving him over. There it is. 
Oh, he's got it tight. There he is. Drew Buckelbile from a freshman, 37 and five from Yorktown advances to tomorrow morning. What is this? Well, we jump right up to 160 pounders. Drew Hughes, Lowell Jr., undefeated, 40 and 0, comes out of the Maryville Simmons State as their champion. His opponent, Evan Stombaugh, from Lebanon. A junior, a junior, no, excuse me, a sophomore with a record of 29 and 8. Drew gets his first takedown. He got a nice cross on his shoulder. He's got another one on his back. Getting back points. So we got two takedown, and I believe he got to five. No, he didn't. He's holding two, which means he only he didn't make it to five. Same hold, so he comes back. I believe that's going to be a stick because that's tight. That's tight. He's got that arm trapped underneath there. All that weight on that far shoulder, the near shoulder is down. There, yep, there it is. Drew Hughes stays undefeated. 41 and 0. Lowell's Jr. advances to tomorrow morning. Still at 160. We have Jacob Gray. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, marked the wrong one. Thank you very much. Brendan Helm, 36 and 2 from Avon, a senior. Jordan Rader from Peru, a freshman, 35 and 7. Nice catch. I don't know, Gray and Helm don't sound anything alike. <laughs> I missed that one. There's two takedown. As that leg, there brings him back down to the mat. Actually, uh, Red went back down on his own. Andy Hobbs is your head coach from Peru. Coaching this freshman, now leading two to nothing. Israel Blevins is uh, Avon's head coach. Took him back down, all he needs to do is attempt to bring him back down. In a reasonable amount of time, it's up to the referee. He does it twice. We see records falling left and right here. Oh. Well, Mikey, they should have asked us about that, huh? LH, LH. Eight seconds to go. Three seconds, he's watching the clock here. Could have easily gotten a stalling call, but he wasn't off of the mat. He wasn't on his feet yet. 
Red's going to be his choice, and Red is going to fur. So Mr. Helm. chooses to defer. Mr. Raider takes neutral. Over a minute and a half has gone through. Excuse me, a minute and a half left. I, down to minute 15. Nice attack on that single leg. Calls him neutral. Still two to nothing for the freshman from Peru. Jordan Raiden. Raider shoots in, grabs that single leg, pulls him back in. Gets that takedown, there it is, and goes out of bounds. So now we have a four to zero. to a pyramid, now come up, comes out front, there's his one, there it is, 20 seconds to go. He's gonna have to do something he hadn't done this match and that's take him down to bring that score up tighter. Five seconds left in this third period, time going down, there it is. Okay, we go to third period. Red's going to have choice, and Red takes top. Interesting. Okay, caution, Red. His knee was coming around the side. Can't do that. Coach was concerned that that might be a false start, and there was another whistle. But that wasn't why he got the caution. His knee had gone around his hips, and he's not, that is an illegal starting position. It needs to be behind his hips. He's locking up that uh, cradle. There it is. Tilts him, one and two and three and four and five. That's three points. That's gonna put him right as a tie. Even if he, if he doesn't put him, he keeps him there. Looking in, looking for that fall. There it is, oh my goodness, outstanding. Down four to one, comes back with a fall. Brendan Brendan Helm from Avon moves off until tomorrow. Still at 160, we go to Adam Dotson from Glenn. He's a senior with a record of 36 and two. His opponent, Ethan Brigman from Indianapolis Cathedral, Ritter, Cardinal Ritter, excuse me, Indianapolis Cardinal Ritter. He's a senior with a record of 36 and four. We got two takedown. For Dotson. Okay, that's John Glenn High School, not just Glenn High School. Thank you for the uh, Banker's Life announcer. He's, he does an outstanding job. 
Kevin Whitehead, is that about his name? Yeah, awesome. Caution red. Miss the line. Makes fast work of getting that escape. Nice takedown. Let's him up. Five to three. Goes again, works hard, misses the takedown. Tim White is your head coach at John Glenn High School. Spencer King is your head coach at Cardinal Ritter. Out of bounds, still neutral, no control. There he goes, right behind. Another fine takedown. Coming down to that 14 seconds in this first period. Got a score seven to three. Ends the period working on a real tight cradle there. Not quite. Red's choice for the second period. Coaches tell him to take down, so he takes down. I mean, Green will have choice in the third period. Caution for a false start. That's his second caution. Let's him know that. The next caution will be a point. Next up, that one, about 60 pounders from Danville, Cody, Cody Connell. And from Delta, a new sophomore. Gets his three. escape. Now it's eight to three. Nice. Oh, oh my goodness. Had that leg, took him down and got rolled and the headlock. So Ethan Hessing, he's got three more points in the bag there. That'll tie the score if he doesn't pin him. Got a whole minute here. Close enough inbounds. Works him down. Pulls him back into bounds. Bottom man can't scoot out of bounds without risking any penalties because there is a three point uh, back in the pocket, if you will. Referee taking a look. 30 seconds. Still looking for it. 10 seconds. Suggested him back into bounds. I don't think he'll get it five seconds. Nope. It's 
So there's the three back points. That makes it eight to eight going into the third period. Green is going to choose down. Okay, looks like he's going to let him up, give him a point. No, that was a caution. Oh, e e illegal alignment. Why, well, I tell you what, that cost him. It's nine. Now let him up. So now it's ten to eight. Was a tie match. Penalty point for misalignment. His third penalty, his third caution. First penalty. Okay, he's using up almost 30 seconds of this third period. He's down. He's going to have to score at least twice to go ahead. The takedown will tie it. Take down back might win it. He's out of bounds. I have another one too. Nice helpers around here, I'll tell you. One minute to go, he's still down by two points. Pulls that in, but they're out of bounds. Adam Dotson needs to energize here to get caught up. He's less than 40 seconds, right at 40 seconds to go. Front headlock, tempts it, goes a headlock. Does not get it. it looks like he's gonna lose. Yep, he lost that to a takedown. So now it's 12 to eight, and I believe that might have sealed the fate for this match. <laughs> Ethan Brigman ahead, 12 to eight. Seventeen seconds. Gives up that escape of just six seconds. Gonna do a little track meet here. There's the stalling and there's the time. And Ether Bergerman from Cardinal Ritter. Moves forward to tomorrow. Now we're going to move off to the 170 pound weight class. Joseph, oh my goodness, Manolini. Well, I hope that's right. I hope that's close. He's a senior from Penn, 33 and 2. Blake Jeffers from Castle is a senior, 33 and 5. Memelite. Okay, I was not close. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice job. There he's getting back points. Holding referee, holding two. Here he pulls him back down. Brad Harper is the head coach from Penn. There's the fall. Nicely done. 
Our next match will also be 170. Ben Harvey from Indianapolis Cathedral, a senior, 42 and one. His opponent's going to be Zachary Davis from Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne Concordia. He's a junior with a record of 39 and two. Let's see here. Mr. Harvey was third at 126 pounds and 13, seventh at 113 and 212. So needless to say, Mr. Harvey has grown a little bit. Would you not say that? He attacks, attacks, and attacks him right out of bounds. Sean McKinley is your head coach at Indianapolis Cathedral. Nice done. There's your two. And Jamie Jamie Jones is your head coach from Concordia. Out of bounds. No change in position. Mr. Davis goes back down defensive. Mr. Harvey says, let's wrestle on our feet. I'll give you an escape. And so there's it's a two to one. Two to one. Yeah, I think maybe there was a tap there. Nice. Reached in there to grab that ankle bite. They're on the out of bounds line. Nice. Nice single leg trip. Brings him back down for the takedown. Now we have a score of four to one. <laughs> it's both legs in. I didn't get the second one all the way in yet. 10 seconds to go. We got potentially dangerous. Probably the shoulder, we couldn't see it from this angle, but probably the shoulder was, was out of position there, going into the wrong direction. Nine seconds, first period. Mr. Harvey's gonna work him, keep him down. Three seconds, two, one, time. So, Green chooses to take down Mr. Harvey. Learn him up. <laughs> Mr. Harvey says, no, nope, let's get up. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Davis said, let's get up. Makes it five to one for Ben Harvey. Indianapolis Cathedral. Oh. He is constantly in on him, isn't he? 
Nice trip. Single leg to a trip. Another two points. Going to take it six to one. Seven to one, excuse me, seven to one. You know, Mike, when we sit here and we film and we talk, we get all kinds of famous people to sit next to us. Absolutely. This is just Schroeder. outstanding. Mr. P Pete Schroeder. Yes, sir. When we get down here, I'll get his autograph. If I get it first. <laughs> okay, potentially dangerous. What, you got a new job or something? What's the deal? What are you Snap doing? my Achilles. Huh? Snap my Achilles. Oh, my God. Works him. There's his back back points. Just drove him right over. He's got a whole minute to just uh, just to hold this. There he goes. There he goes. It's going to be real tight. A lot of pressure down. There's his three near fall. Ten to one. That's that's tight. Brings it down. He's gonna get three more points out of this if he doesn't pin him. That's looking really good. Yep. Okay. 19 seconds left in the second period. Ben Harvey, 43 and one. Pins Zachary Davis and moves off to tomorrow. We're gonna move off to 182 pounds now. Bout number. Okay, unbeaten Mason Paris from Lawrenceburg, a freshman, and his opponent Jake Clinoni from Lake Central, a junior with 34 and six record. Obviously, the uh, Lawrenceburg gentleman comes out of Newcastle as the seven state champion there at 182 pounds. You know, you don't see a lot of freshmen at the top of this uh, weight class like that. There's two points. Gets that takedown, lets him up. Okay, gets the second takedown. Four to three. Well, that was a tough cross face. But wrestling's a tough sport. Goes to lock in a cradle. Has his hands locked. Gets the turn, one, two, there's count, three, four, and number five, so he's holding three. Three more back points for him. This kind of explains that 51 and 0 uh, record. There's three more back points. Now we got seven to three. Counting down three seconds left in this period. There we are. Okay, Green's going to have choice. Lake Central chooses down for the second period. As he's behind, seven to three. 
Okay, he heard another whistle. No. Says he's misaligned. Wasn't the whistle, but it was a misalignment. His head was in the wrong place. On or above the spine is where the head is to be. Coach wanted to know, say, well, wait a minute. Was that for that whistle? And the referee says, no. Had his head in the wrong spot. Try to drop down on that ankle. Whoa! Gets that ankle in there, but has that whizzer. Mason is fighting off that takedown. Gets that head locked up, gets rid of that, and gets the takedown. Awesome. Great scrambling here. Great offense, great scrambling. Says, okay, we're going to let you up. Score is nine to five. Kind of want to go into a Dolly Parton song here. I'm thinking not. Trying to go out the back door there. The top wrestler, that the wrestling green wrestler. Locked his hand. Cannot cannot scissor or figure four the head. In any position. That's illegal. Causes the point. Ten to five now. Ten to five. Lawrenceburg is about far southeast as you can get in Indiana, down by Cincinnati, Ohio. Lake Central is about as far northwest as you can get in Indiana, up by Chicago. So these guys have certainly never seen each other, all possibility. Coaches are discussing things with the referee. Quite impressive for a freshman at 182 pound weight class here. 51 and zero and taking command of this match. Got hat, pulls in that ankle. Switch off, has the ankle, picks it up. Takes him down, there he goes, his, his weight is on his hands. So he gets the takedown, three seconds to go, it's 12 to five now. Out of bounds, right at the buzzer. So we go into the third period, 12 to five for Mason Paris from Lawrenceburg. He chose, he chooses down. And from Western Boone High School, Jonathan Morales. Comes right up, goes back down. <laughs> That's how it works, Mike. Action, reaction. That's it. Comes back out front, has that single leg, but we've seen him scramble from that. No scram, didn't work that time. Locks that, trying to lock that head and arm there, it looks like to me. Yep. Goes out of bounds. Okay, he turns. Referee gives him one. He goes back down to that leg. This has been his move all night. He picks that leg up now. If he switches over, he can get the two. There it is. 15 to five now. 10 point lead which is a major decision if it ends in the score 50 seconds left to go driving that shoulder over he's not satisfied with a 10 point lead he lost that arm 
Knight hooks it back. Less than 30 seconds to go. Oh, slips that half in there. There it is. He's getting back points. At least two more. Maybe three. I'd say three more. There's 10 seconds to go. He's got a three. That'll be 18 to five. 13 point lead. And that'll end the match. Almost a tech fall. Not quite. Again, I say that's very impressive for a freshman at the 182 pound weight class. what I had already, all right. Okay, still at 182. We have Hunter Heinstead, a senior from Yorktown, 46 and five. Kyle Schaefer from South Putnam, a sophomore with a record of 39 and one. Yorktown will come out of Newcastle, Sim Estate, South Putnam, I believe is out of Evansville, some mistake. Nice single leg countered by a wizard. Driving him right out of bounds. Josh Hickerson is your head coach from South Putnam. Trent McCormick's the head coach, but in the corner right now is Troy Delaney, assistant coach for Yorktown. You know, it's hard to be uh, neutral. We see these kids all year long. Nice go behind there. There's the takedown. Young man from Franklin Community just won down uh, on mat number one. Uh, he was returning state champion. We got blood time on green. So again, each wrestler gets five minutes of blood time of actual bleeding and then any cleanup is not counted in that. So we, they'll, uh, they'll try to control and get the blood under control. And then, uh, and then they'll give him time to clean it up. Well, the referee just stopped the blood time. Now they'll work on cleanup. The trainer is working with him. Puts a nose stop in. I would be remiss to, we haven't had any pairing kids on our mat, so I couldn't talk about uh, Coach Jim Tante from Perry Meridian, but who's always uh, always in vogue. How's that? Today is his birthday. Not too many, how, how many years that that is, but uh, he's younger than I am, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Happy birthday, Coach Tante. We're closing in now. We got 195 pounders coming up on other mats. We're at 82. 
You got second period now, two to zero. For Kyle Schaefer. Yeah, there lost his nose plug again. More blood time, but again, there's no limit of blood time as long as he doesn't uh, go over five minutes of bleeding. He does good as my replacement. Printer boy, printer boy, can I have a set of those when you're done? Answer is yes. Yes. Thank Did you. I just say yes? Good man. For you, yes. I'm telling you what, the people here working at this uh, state finals are outstanding. We do have a lot of volunteers working. And I guess uh, our payment is to be right down here on the mat side. Absolutely. What an outstanding payment, by the way. Absolutely. Five feet from the wrestling surface. Yep. With hardly any responsibility. I like that part, too. Nice job. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, yeah. Good job, good eye on the referee to stop that. He really had his arms all twisted up in there. on a cradle, got that leg in there. No back points, he's too high. Six inches, I believe it's four. <laughs> Coach is uh, letting us know, but I believe it, he does have to be within four inches of the mat. There's a count of one, there's another, there's a count of two. He gets a count of five. So there's three points he's holding. And here they come, three near fall. Three near fall. Makes that five to nothing. 50, uh, less than 50 seconds left in the second period. Freshman, by the way. I know. Oh. <laughs> yes, he did. 23 seconds left, second period. Scores 5-0 to zero for Kyle Schaefer from South Putnam. <laughs> Counting down, under 10 now. York time reaches back, try to get a headlock, but unsuccessful. There's the end of the period. We got uh, a little cleanup here. Just clean up, no blood. Right above his socks. Very much so. Only when we want to be. Okay, third period, five to zero. Kyle Schaefer from South Button is ahead. Hunter Heiston from Yorktown. He is a senior. Kyle is a sophomore. Working that arm back.
Nice job, reversal. Just pired that in there, really. Visibly. He stopped it, warning for stalling because he held his ankle up while flat on the mat up to his hips. Can't hold it there for over five seconds. Reversal two. Reversal two. I'm looking down to see who's next, and I missed that. Fortunately, everybody watching this didn't miss that. That's why our audience is so much smarter than we are. Absolutely. You got a Pepsi there? Oh my God, you are like angels. Okay, he gets an escape. Green's just bleeding profusely now. So we got an eight to two. We go back on blood time. He's used over a minute so far. This is a full-fledged Pepsi. I think it's one of those Pepsi. I think it's one of those Pepsi's with a D word in front of it. Doesn't have all the pack. Doesn't have the sugar. But you know what? Well, probably doesn't have that either. Has some of that artificial stuff. Nice view of one of our uh, referees. Official Med Vesic. They have uh, they stopped the blood time a long time ago. As we get a as we get a little visitation from our assistant referee, I think his name is John Smith, George Jones. I don't know. Josh Medvesic. I'm gonna use Smith or Jones because I can't say the other. Well, we just got an attendance. We got over 9,000 fans here with us tonight. It's just exciting to bring all these people together for this tremendous state final series. Still did a lot of cleanup over there. There was must have been a lot of the blood. It's all cleaned up now. We're back on the mat. Eight to two. We're starting a neutral position again. We get driven out of bounds. No call here. Oh, there, that was nice. Didn't keep him down on the mat. There. Still no. There's the takedown. Just didn't get enough hand pressure, and he only had one knee down. Then he got the second knee down, the hand come up. Let's him go. Four seconds. 
There it is, gets called for the stalling, but that didn't really matter. That was another point for Green, so that ended up 10 to four, I believe is the end of it, yeah. All right, our next one, Matthew Hayes from Providence High School. He's a senior, 38 and three. His opponent is David Eli from Elkhart Memorial. He's a sophomore with 38 and three. Matching records, senior versus sophomore. Head coach from Providence High School is Mr. Patrick Fleming. Head coach from Elkhart Memorial, Brian Weaver. I have a little history behind Patrick. He, he graduated from the high school he's coaching at, and he was here his senior year. So it's, it's good to see full circle of our coaches, from wrestlers to coaches. There are many of those around here tonight. I'm looking over here in the next mat. And I see another one. Kyle McClurg, he's assistant coach at Carmel with Eddie Pendowski. We've not seen those guys on our mat. Hayes gets that single leg. And David fights it off of that wizard and gets it. Good defense. Just a reminder, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, wrestling will start. We'll be here with you, Mr. Mike and myself. We'll be back. Yes, we haven't left yet. Oh, look, we got a new towel tapper on our mat. He's a pretty cute towel tapper. We upgraded. <laughs> we upgraded. <laughs> What's this, the Mike and Lewis show? <laughs> yes, yes, it is, the Mike and Lewis show. Would you like to get in? <laughs> you could be our weather guy. It's 18 degrees outside. You're a lion, it ain't that warm. <laughs> one point there for Mr. Hayes from Providence. That brings the score, one to nothing. Okay, a lawyer and he doesn't lie. And it is 18 degrees. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, wind chill factor, it just seems like it's colder. Okay, good good single leg. Brings him down to the mat, gets the takedown. Close to getting back points. Blake Wright Pellet Cathedral, the quarterback ball on mat number two. He goes to 44 and all on the season. Two twenties now up on that number two. Boy, he gets that arm way up there. Way up there. Oh, he's off the, wow. Boy, I tell you what now. My arm's hurting there, Mike. I tell you, famous people keep walking up here. Bill Carpenter, I'm telling you. If you don't know him, you should. Got him on his back. Looks like he got a count of two, maybe not. Yep, sure did. Two near fall brings the score now, four to one. Locked up in a cradle, rolls him, but really he's in bad position on that cradle. Looks like he's gonna get a reverse if he can pull his head off. He's got, not pull his head off, but 
out. How's that? He does get the reversal. Four to three. Very close match. Let's that uh, ankle go. Third period, four to three. Very close match. Right now, David Eli from Elkhart Memorial leads this match. Matthew Hayes from Providence. David chooses down. Looking to get a reverse or a escape. Matthew's gonna need to turn him to score some points or let him go and take him down. Thirty seconds has gone by. Now He gets reversed. Pulling that through, looking for a looking for a nice cheap tilt as they call it. Not quite getting it, him turned all the way over. You know, I have to say this, but Mr. Fleming there is a veteran. He's a navy naval officer. I guess uh, the coach for Providence, and it's uh, always good to know that graduate graduate of Annapolis. Yes, it is. Looks like this is going to end. 20 seconds to go, and he, he's got him almost on his back. Looks like referee, yeah, referee's holding two, so it'll be two more. There it is, two more back points. We've got eight to three now, six seconds to go. Pretty much does it. Three, two, one, there it is. All right, so we move forward. We're gonna move up to 195 pounds. Oh, well, hi Dave, he's the guy you gotta tell. <laughs> well, you know, you get to sit here and you, get to shake hands with famous people too. Thank you, Dave Eli. Well, you know, we were talking about Mr. Uh, Tante, and there he is in the corner. Perry Meridian head coach, coaching his son, Tristan Tante, at 195 pounds. Tristan comes in here with a record of 40 and two, and he is a sophomore. You know, we're seeing some young guys at these higher weights. That's unusual. That's right. Matt Hedrick from Portage. He's a senior, 26 and seven. The service at this restaurant is excellent. And for those who weren't listening earlier, Mr. Tante, Coach Tante, celebrating a, a, his, a birthday. One of many, I'm sure, but I'm not sure how many. But that's all right. It's less than, it's less than my birthdays. We'll leave it at that. As each wrestler here works for position, trying to, trying to find an opening in each other's defense. And it appears to me, though, that Tristan seems to be uh, the more aggressive. He's constantly moving forward, where uh, Matt seems to be moving backwards. So that's a nice little, tries to slide by. Well, 
Tristan does the same thing, but they're out of bounds. Just a bit of a shout out to Tina. You know, she just, hello, Tina. One heck of a worker. Yes, right. Yep, well, Jim is our uh, the ISWA junior director, along with his, all the work he does for his club and his young kids, and at high school. Very busy man. Graduate of uh, University of, of uh, Indianapolis. Won uh, Team State last year, was it? I know this year, Modern Day won the Team State. Coaches Association puts on that tournament at the end. Last year was Franklin. Last year was Franklin. Excuse me. Corrected by the weatherman, Pete Schroeder. 18 degrees. <laughs> 18 degrees. He was a championship match official. Yeah. Last year. Yes, he was. Yes, he is. Not was, but is. Deep on that single leg. Tristan has that underhook. But... <laughs> They go out of bounds, could not finish that single leg. And the head coach for Portage is Leroy Vega. They've, we've had plenty of Portage kids on this mat. Right now in the corners, Eric uh, Keith. Eric Keith is the assistant coach, and he's the one working in the corner. Got one to nothing right now. These two are just battling on their feet. Neither one of them seem to find an opening. Probably come into the third period if we make it that far. One minute to go. If we don't get any scoring, we'll probably get an escape on uh, by Matt. I'm sure that he'll choose down. But you never know. Again, the, the effectiveness of driving, driving, and uh, Red not moving forward, but moving backwards. Play in the line causes that, uh, that uh, warning for stalling. No points here, no penalties, just a warning. The next call, though, will be a point. Difficult to call a wrestler for stalling when he's constantly moving forward and making attempts to, for takedowns. One second, there it is. All right, we go to third period. One to nothing. Tante, Red will take down, as I said earlier. <clears throat> does have a referee warranty. He does have uh, a warning for stalling. But I don't know that we're going to see much stalling here on the bottom. Well, I, I say that. I don't think we will. <laughs> okay, he gets that hook in the wrist. But there are, you know, he really is not going to be able to do much because he's right there on the out of bounds. Now he goes to half. 17.4 This is a this is a tight tight match one to nothing Tristan with a record of 40 and 2 sophomore Matt with a record of 26 and 7 a senior Both Portage and Perry Meridian very tough programs Always have kids in the finals here. Always at the top of the uh, rankings. Okay, we're down to a minute. One minute. There's that escape. Now we're tied, less than a minute. 
No takedowns have come in this match, so this may lead us right into a an overtime. We'll see. Remember that Matt has a stalling warning, which means his next stalling call is going to be a point for Tristan. Twenty-five seconds. They're both rushers staying right there in the center of the mat. Tristan takes a shot. Thirteen seconds. Portage coach letting his wrestler know one takedown wins it, and that's the truth. But you got eight seconds. Both have attempted to make some pretty good shots. There we go. Now we're going to have one minute in our sudden death overtime. Any point will win it for the wrestler. One minute. Takes a shot. This is where that stalling warning is really difficult. Has it? Nope. Out of bounds. The toes were out. Toes were out. Portage coach looking for maybe a fleeing call. Or at least a stalling call. Doesn't get it. Referee stops that. Head gig came off of uh, Tristan uh, from Perry Meridian. Stops it to put it on. Oh, wait, look at that, look at that. Oh my goodness, there it is, takedown. Wow, that was exciting. <laughs> just grabbed him, got stumbled, got caught up and, and lost it. It's just one mistake, that's what happens. Tristan Tante moves on, gives his dad a nice birthday present of winning Friday night, moving on till Saturday morning. Now we're going to move off to, looks like 220. 220. Okay, <clears throat> this is match 100 of tonight's bouts. Ryan Gould from Indianapolis Cathedral, a junior with a record of 26 and 5. He'll be green. Clayton Scroggs from Martinsville, a sophomore, 37 and 6. And there we go, another underclassman up in this upper weight class. Certainly two different body builds here. Martinsville head coach is Dave Con Contra, Contra. Excuse me, Dave, if I mispronounced that. I'm sure I did. And again, um, Indianapolis Cathedral. The head coach is Sean McGinley. Coaches have been working all year. Actually, they work all out of bounds. You know, they work more than the season. Putting a lot of time and effort on their wrestlers. The wrestlers put the time in as well, but certainly uh, must give credit to our coaches who do a tremendous job. Nice body lock. A lot of bounds, though. Could not finish that. Zero to zero. 40 seconds to go. Please stop going. 
our next match, and looking down here, is going to be a 285 pound. So we're quickly coming to the end of tonight's bouts. So, still no score here. There it is, the end of the first period, zero to zero. <clears throat> Green wins the toss and he takes down. He's attempting to score first. Red is gonna be called for caution for improper starting position. Referee instructs him on what he did wrong. Ryan just popped right up. There's his escape. He grabs that leg, but still, there he gets it. Pulled him back in, got that takedown. That gives him three to zero lead. Uh-oh, he attempted to push him out. It looks like, yep, looks like he got a reversal on him. Now we're now two to three. Ryan from Cathedral is ahead, but uh, he lost that three point lead. Now it's just a one point lead. Does a nice job to roll through, but doesn't get all the way up. Yep, the hands on there. Got uh, locked hands. Okay, there's the escape. Now the score is two to five, five to two. Five seconds left now in this second period. Five to two, five to two. Ryan from Indianapolis Cathedral is ahead. Red is now going to take down. That'd be Clayton from Martinsville. Okay. Let's him up. Gets the escape. Five to three. Offensively, really, I, I think that Ryan could be say he's the one that's been offensive most of the spirit most of his match. Coaches for cathedrals asking for some more movement. Certainly, we need a little bit more of that. Fifty-three seconds left. Okay, he was busy looking at the clock, and uh, so Clayton gets a nice single leg. Let's see if he can finish it. Gets his head to the outside. Think they're going to go out of bounds, and he does a little leg, a hip toss, or a, excuse me, a cross throw. We call that a freestyle move. With no, no control. Mm -hmm. 
brings him back. 23 seconds to go, we're in neutral position. Clayton from Martinsville is down by two. He's gonna need something big here, he needs a big throw. Takedown will uh, certainly tie it, but he needs to, to get that win. 12 seconds to go, needs a throw. There's the stalling call on Green. Could have easily gotten another stalling call, but wouldn't have made a difference in the match. Ryan Gould from Indianapolis Cathedral moves to the next level. Now we got some big boys, 285 from Ben Davis, Norman Oglesby, undefeated, 32-0. Last year he was runner-up in this weight class. I do believe his goal is to be on that top step, just like there is everybody here. But Ryan was here last year, finished runner-up. Drew Hovick from Zionsville, senior, 30 and 16 record. Brings it down, gets that two point takedown. Back up, it's a, uh, we're new, neutral. A lot of movement at heavyweight, that's what we like to see. You don't always get to see that. <laughs> Cameras will be rolling at nine. We'll have wrestling. We'll be here. Matt three. <laughs> My goodness. A little bit of a... Uh... Yeah. A little arm toss. A lot of power there. Nice single leg, drive out. You get your foot out of the way, dude. Drags him back in, nice takedown. We'll let him, probably let him go here. No, nope. they go out of bounds. It looks like we'll have one more match coming up on this mat. His back, his, net, his back was out of bounds, the shoulders. Head coach for Ben Davis is Theodore Behrman. For Penn, I'm looking over there. I that doesn't look like the people I know, but Brad Harper is the head coach for Zion, Penn. No, Zion. uh, Zionsville? Zion well, no wonder Brennan. I don't know those. Jared Williams is our head coach. Yeah. And that's Brennan and Morgan. Yep. Oh, obviously looking at the wrong three seconds. I'm looking at our next match. Can't get too far ahead, can I? Six to two. Second period, Red's gonna have the choice. Red takes down. So Green will have the choice in the third period. <laughs> Steps right up and just turns. I mean, that just looked so easy, didn't it? And that, trust me, I know it's not easy, but it looked easy. He makes it look that way. Hello. 
Okay, we don't want no close-in shots. Close-in shots. Drew is just doing a lot of blocking with that head. For so I drew, I'd block with my head and everything else I had. He's given up a few pounds, there's no doubt. Just drags, just knocks him down, really. Just powerful, very powerful. So he secures that takedown. He takes him back down to the mat. Nine to two, second period, 35 seconds to go. All right, cuts him loose at 17 seconds. That's interesting. <laughs> Still nine to three. Okay, we're done with the second period. Green's gonna have choice going into third and Green's taking down. Okay, you got an escape. Just command, he's just in total command of this match, there's no doubt. Just just an awesome well that's, that's why he's finished second last year and it's gonna make his way, but I'm gonna tell you I just know I just witnessed uh, another heavyweight over here that pinned his opponent in 25 seconds, so I got a feeling he's gonna have some stumbling blocks to get over. We got a minute four left in this match. Although I think the other guy was pretty good too. Well, from Richmond. Yeah, there are a couple of really big guys here tonight that uh, make this heavyweight weight class look pretty good. Norman, uh, as I mentioned, was runner-up last year. The other guy is on mat number uh, two right now, Sean Sheck from Maryville. Uh, he's undefeated right now coming into this, and he was third last year at 285. So you got number two and number three from last year here. Both of them want to be up a little higher, I'm sure. One more step, two more steps. We got 13 seconds left. Ten seconds. As we roll out of bounds. Eleven to four. Pretty much uh, this match is pretty much settled.
not to quit. There's your time. A little bit of push in there. Referee warns him, talks to him. 33 and 0 now. Okay, here, this should be our final match of the evening on our mat. We'll see. We got Drew Cummings from Columbia City, a senior with a record of 34 and 4 against Corey Chrisman, a senior from Penn High School with a record of 33 and 4. Both seniors. So Brad Harper from Penn, who's been on our map before, and uh, is the head coach for Penn High School. Columbia City, he's been on our map before too. And his name is Blaine Culp. Been around quite a while, both of these. Brad was a two-time, I believe two-time state champion. Went off to college, come back, now coaching at Penn High School. He was a graduate of Mishawaka, if I'm not mistaken. He was an uh, All-American uh, wrestler. Nice takedown. Stepped on the foot there and kind of tripped him, which is legal in folk style. Absolutely. Again, we mentioned the young men that we've seen in the past grow up as wrestlers, be successful, go off, come back uh, from college and uh, uh, take over these programs. Penn is a tremendous program, has been, a lot of history there. And he comes back and he continues the tradition there. As again, I say all these many coaches are doing this, but you know, as we stick around a while and we see this, it's uh, very satisfying. Okay, here we go now. Second period, two to one. One takedown, one escape. Red's going to have choice, and he. Red takes down. Red takes down. Okay, get a caution for false start. Warns the wrestlers, come back on. That's another whistle over there. So that nobody's charged any kind of cautions for that. Instructions from the referee to reset the clock to two minutes because we really haven't started. That was caught by our ample assistant official out there. Okay, we got an escape. Yep, that's the last, this is the last match to come up on our mat. So we're gonna be done here real soon. See, it's, uh, I think the time on my clock, my computer is wrong, it says it's three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm thinking that's not right. It's 9.40. It's about the right time. Finishing up here on a Friday night. Again, we come back tomorrow. We start, uh, matches start at nine o'clock. It was like 11 to two. 
talking about a match next door. Uh, one of the contenders for this championship. And that's two to two, and these guys are just kind of pounding on each other's heads. 30 seconds to go left in this match. Two to two, seven seconds to go in the seventh or in the seventh inning here. <laughs> yes, sir. Seventh Second inning straight. Yeah, get get on the right one. I'm thinking springtime. I think a little warmth maybe. Okay, now we go to the third inning. <laughs> oh my word! All right, gentlemen. Two to two. No. Two to two. Corey Chrisman from Penn on the bottom. He gets the escape. Now it's two to one. Three to two. I'm sitting there looking at the wrong uh, score. Must be late. Must be late. So he copy boy? No. <laughs> Camera. He goes, we can't see anything. Oh! I've got the state final. Little tumble out of bounds to the floor. He's afraid of me. He's not afraid of me. No, because I do. I do the zoom. I really zoom in. You said you then didn't I, do that. Then I pan it around to the crowd. Then I get ambled and she's out looking. <laughs> Two cameramen arguing about who's the best. I don't know. Kevin Troy is the best cameraman ever. One minute. But I like the job being I can't It's a change, but you don't get lots of stuff. Oh, I know what it is. Not exactly been an exciting match. These guys have uh, just kind of really pushed around. Looks like we got a takedown though. On his back, actually he's pinned, but you can't pin him out of bounds. So now we go to five to two. He fights out, gets that escape pretty easy. Now it's uh, yeah, five to five to three. Think we're gonna come up with the end of this match a little excitement, maybe. Looking for a headlock, did got behind him. Nobody's in charge there. You're too wet now. Yeah, you ain't wrong. Okay, I think it's gonna end our evening. Our winner here is Corey Christman from Penn High School, senior. The record now 34 and 4. He advances to tomorrow's. Now we'll start at 9 o'clock. Be there. Are you done with these? Are you uh, taking these? Yeah, I was gonna take them with me. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not. But I guess I'll let you. Here you can take this one. Oh, oh, no, wait a minute. Talk like you like a dog. I was a Can I have your autograph, sir? Yeah, you can have your autograph.
Well, you can, but first you gotta talk to my people. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, I gotta show you the uh, email or the uh, text I sent to this family. What did they say? Uh, oh, oh. You, you know, you, uh, you know, 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 there you go. I have none. I have none. I have none. I I have none. I have I have none. I have I have I have none. I have I have I I And then later on, I said, he's actually good at looking to me. I thought I'd like one up right now, but I don't know. John, should I clear up the table to stuff? No, who, who picked up the trash bag and all stuff? Dan Fees have cleaned up this one. Yeah. 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 You put your trash bag. Everything that needed to go back is in the back. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Say my first rodeo, Mr. Fleming. <laughs> Mine either, right? <laughs> Bryce Middle of Plainfield, the winner on that number one. He advances at 285. Uh, Randall's.
Jerka Franklin, a two foot winner at 55 in this evening's final match. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance tonight. Doors open at 8.30 tomorrow morning for wrestling, which begins at 9.30 a.m. It's the greatest day of the wrestling season. Everybody come back and bring a couple of friends with you. Thank you and good evening. Put the biohazard stuff out. That's a good question. 